You know, all the great presidents own Winchester rifles. And so today on Gunsmoke Guns TV, which if you haven't yet, would you please subscribe, click on the bell, and also please tell your friends. We need to get those numbers of those subscriptions up a little higher. I need your help with that. Back to the 1866 Winchester. This was the first of the urban assault rifles. This gun was phenomenal. It was great. Now, some of you are wondering, I know some of you are going to question, hey, didn't you get in trouble and you're not supposed to be handling guns? I filmed this years ago before any of this stuff happened. Matter of fact, just so everybody knows, that set's completely gone, no longer exists. So there's no possible way I did this recently. Anyway, I hope you get a lot out of the history that Bob and I have to show you. Thank you very much for watching. Please tell your friends about it. Subscribe. Click on the bell. Do everything you can to help us blow this up. And we're going to bring you some more great stuff. Hi, I'm Rich Wyatt. Welcome to GunsmokeGunsTV.com. So Bob, today we're going to talk about assault rifles. Okay. So we're going to talk about the 1866 Winchester, which of course was one of the first assault rifles. And it was an assault rifle in 1866 for certain. Oh man, it assaulted yep. some people, didn't it? You know, Winchester feels, or have, they've said, and kind of public opinion, this is the gun that won the West. Oh yeah. Well, you know, I, I have a little difficulty with that, mainly because they made a whole lot more Model 73s, which this gun's based on. Sure. But this was the this was the first really reliable repeater. So Henry right. came out with a gun that was a lever action. Right. But they had a couple of flaws. You know, uh, just yes. as anything would. Right. I mean, a great gun. Don't get me wrong. Right. Everybody should have one. But this was the first... The, the biggest flaw, I think, in the Henry was that the magazine tube, if you held on to the forend, would stop working. Well, there was no forehand, but the the, 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 the follower, forehand area. Yeah, the follower would actually you, your hand would stop it, and you're working the action, yeah, and nothing's, nothing's happening. Going. Winchester buys the Henry Rifle Company, right? Repeating Rifle Company, and he modifies the gun, right? With the help of Tyler B. Henry, and they make this 1866 Winchester. Do you know why every rimfire cartridge made by Winchester today has an H on the bottom? Henry to commemorate Tyler B. Henry. So. so this gun was a 44, but it was a rimfire. Most people don't realize that. They don't realize it was a 44 rimfire. Now this gun is known as the Yellow Boy. Yep. Because the receiver's brass. Bronze. Bronze. Right. But looks like brass. Bro, it looks like brass. Yes. Should we polish it? No. Really? Now that's very important, folks. Realize this. If you ever get one of these rifles and you take and polish this patina that's on there that they call mustard. Mustard, yep. If you polish that off and make it look bright, you have ruined a percentage of the value of the gun. Just ruined it. So don't do it. Don't, now look, you can see the patina on this one, and you can see the patina on this one, and you can see this one has been cobbed with. Somebody messed with that. They tried to put patina back on it. They year. tried to, somebody polished it off and tried to make it look old again. But you can never make it look as good or as real as these two. Now, these are saddle ring carbines. This is the, uh, to me, the coolest. You right. see mostly the rifles with the octagon barrel. Right. But the saddle ring with the saddle ring on the side, short barrel, round barrel gun, this is a saddle gun. This is something that was... That this is what the cowboys used. Oh, man. When they were out, out in Texas, rounding up the Longhorns to head them up to Kansas to put them on the train to head them back east for the beef-hungry people after the Civil War, this was the rifle they probably carried. Actually, they probably didn't carry it on their saddles, but they had them in the chuck wagon or, right. or the blanket wagon so that they could get them in case of an Indian attack or, or something like that. Do you, know, do you know what the saddle ring does? You know why it's called a saddle ring? Why? It's really interesting because this, this actually started long before the Civil War. Carbines, mounted troops, carried carbines. There was no real easy way to carry it. You couldn't carry it over your shoulder. You didn't want to do that because it's out of the way. So they came up with a ring and it was a wide strap. 
the saddle ring strap with a with a spring hook on the end of it, and you hook that on the uh, on the saddle ring of the carbine, and there was a socket on your stirrups. You stuck the barrel down in the socket, and it kept the gun from bouncing bounce around. But you had it readily available to shoot right there. So. so if you look at the guns today, all the AR-15s that are all across the world, this is the original single point sling, isn't it? It is. It is the original single point sling. And what the cowboys did, they didn't carry that stupid strap that the cavalry troopers really needed. They put a piece of rawhide yeah, on there and they hung it over the saddle horn. Oh yeah, because that's hung the it down that way. That's a great place for it to be. It was right there, readily available, handy to get to. So really, if you look at this gun, this stuff is still used in battle today. This single point sling is just like you're gonna mount on your AR-15 or your AR-10, all the stuff, all the newfangled, you know, Velcroed stuff you got started right here, right here on the Winchester rifle. Yep. And you know what? I believe that this is a true urban assault rifle. I think a guy that runs a gun like this, now maybe not the 66 because of the because of the receivers, a little weak. Well, you know what, in 1866, there was no argument because there was nothing else. No, well, argument. actually there were other guns, but, but this is probably the most, one of the most popular, if not the most popular, uh, available to the average cowboy, if he could afford to save up the 23 bucks or whatever it costs to get one. Keep in mind, $23 in 1866, that's like a couple thousand dollars today. Oh yeah, a month's pay. Uh, yeah, it was actually, right? yeah. A month's pay. We look at this stuff and this was the stuff that started this country and got it rolling and got it going. And let me tell you, I still think if you take a Winchester 1894, that 1894, I still think that's a, a good urban carbine. Something that you can fight with, something you can defend your family with, you can defend your home, you can defend your truck. I agree. Whatever you got. And when you pull that gun out, folks, if you get stopped traveling across the country and you're in one of those liberal states like Illinois or New York City or something like that, where they hate guns and Americans, then you got an Air 15, you're up the creek, right? So you got it. But if you got an old cowboy gun like an 1894 Winchester, man, you're good. What to can go. they say? So nothing. I mean, say, oh, especially if you or me has it, you know. Yeah, I right. Mean, you know, we, we don't look like. Uh, well, you that's your typical gangbanger. No, that's for sure. That's right. Sagging and dragging. And yeah, that's like me. An idiot. Yeah. So the 66 was where it really got rocking and rolling. It took off from the Henry. What was the big difference between the 73 and the 66? Iron frame. Iron frame. That, and that was because. Winchester recognized very quickly. I mean, 1866 to 1873 is only seven years. That's right. They recognized very, very quickly that the rimfire Henry Flat rimfire cartridge wasn't enough poop. No. And so they, they realized they were going to have to go to more powerful cartridges. And they also realized that the toggle link mechanism that locks this along with the cannon bronze, cannon metal frame just wasn't going to be strong enough. But the toggle link didn't change till 86. No, exactly. The toggle link stayed the same, but it was the the amount of strength that this bronze frame had as opposed to the to the iron iron frame. Yeah. Now, the other thing they added was a dust cover. They did. They put a dust cover over the top. The top of the gun right here, you can see the bolt right here, and that's the breech face where it meets the barrel. Rain and mud. And you get stuff in there, and it yep. doesn't work. That's so they right. put a little dust cover on there. They called it a dust cover, but it really wasn't for dust. It was for mud and rain, right. wasn't it? Right. And so these are some quintessential guns of the West. Everybody uses that word. I love it. I like to say quintessential, quintessential, quintessential. If you don't have one of these in your collection, you're yeah, not, well, you're not really a Winchester. Yeah, collector. not really a Winchester collector. No, okay, that's not true because there are some really good Winchester collections out there that don't have this stuff. But they're directed collections. They're U.S. military. They're sure. there's something other shotguns, whatever. But if you're a Winchester lever action collector, this you got to have. You got to have one of these. Got it. You know the the other major change. You were talking about the 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 open magazine here and the follower that your hand yeah. stopped. That was part of the problem. The other part of the problem, the magazine was open from here to here, and so sticks and dust and mud Fell and stuff get in there. there. So the, probably the most important change that Winchester made with the 66 was putting the loading gate, loading gate yeah. which allowed a closed magazine and more easily loading, uh, loading the cartridges. So the, at the end of the day, the cartridges loaded from up top here. Right, you head. actually twisted the, the magazine open. And this was all open on the bottom. No piece of wood here, no nope. forehand. Right. And so you'd see, we'll do a piece on the Henry at some point. Yeah, yeah. And of course the 73 too, because it wouldn't be complete to not do it. But guys, let me tell you, 
This Winchester right here is a collectible gun. This is something that is an investment in history in America, in the United States. This isn't something, now you'll see them in old Mexico, but you didn't see these guns all over Europe. No, not in Europe so much, but uh, they were they were very popular in Mexico. As a matter of fact, Winchester made these guns up until what, 1899? 1899, 1899 it was and, okay, the, the last gun was made in 1899, but I'll bet there were a few others that were sold sure. after that. Sure. But they the ones, the last ones went to Mexico. And the reason they went to Mexico, I think the, the bra, it, it was, uh, the, the yellow boy, no, I think the yellow boy was a badge of manhood honor. and honor. And so uh, they were willing to take the less powerful cartridge in order to get the bronze frame. Well, this is the type of gun that you want to get. And folks, let me tell you, in any condition, this gun is valuable. In any condition, it is valuable. Uh, there are a lot of these down in Old Mexico still. Oh yeah. Even though they're not supposed to have them, these things are still stashed down there. And uh, if you can get an opportunity to own something like this, remember when you're buying, when you're investing in a gun and you want to put something up that's going to make you some money, buy the best quality you can afford because it increases in value so much more. Right. Now this one, this is a cool gun. This is, this is one of those that you wish you could talk. Look at the difference in the stocks. This has almost all of the original factory finish on it. Yep. This has very little of the original factory finish, except you notice the forehand isn't nearly as worn. And this is because this gun was in a saddle scabbard. That's right. This was exposed to the weather, this side less so than this side, which tells me that the gun was in a saddle scabbard like this. Absolutely. And what's the, the rawhide stock repair, somewhere 200 miles from the closest gunsmith, this stock gun was broken, might have used it to club somebody with it, dropped it on the ground, whatever. The stock was broken. Horse could have fallen over on it. Uh, bumped it against a tree and broken it. Yep. So the fellow that fixed this took a piece of rawhide. Rawhide is the hide directly from the cow. It's un, uh, it's un, un uh, tanned. tanned in any way. It's pure, hence the name rawhide. Yeah. He wrapped it on there, he stitched it tight with a rawhide thong, and then let it dry. And as it dried, it's that wood, the stock is probably stronger now than it was before the, the ride was put on there. Absolutely. So don't you wish this one could talk? Man, well, show them my favorite part of this one. What's that initial carved on the buttstock right there? Did you do that? No. Yeah. That's an R. That's an R. Yeah, you betcha. R. That's fantastic. Well, Bob, this is a gun that everybody wants a piece of, but not everybody can own one. So those of you that have one, congratulations. Those of you that are looking for one, go find one. Make sure it's a good gun because folks, there's a lot of fakes out there. They still make this gun today in an Italian copy. It's a wonderful gun if you're looking for a shooter, but it is not the collector that this gun is. So make absolutely sure because somebody tried to get to us once before on that Italian thing, didn't they? They did. And they yeah. almost did. They almost did. But we we prevailed because we brought in Larry Wilson and Steve Feestead who know it all. They know it all. And those guys were great and they saved our bacon. As a matter of fact, they brought the, the rough drafts of a book that, that Larry was writing that had pictures and dimensions and that's how they told the difference. The, the frame on that uh, pistol was actually shorter than the actual gun was yep. and that's how they knew. So, so they, watch out, be careful because you can be fooled. For the money that these guns are bringing, it's worth it to make a fake. Yep. Thanks for watching Gunsmoke Guns TV. We appreciate you out there today. Bob and I love the history and we want to share that with you. Please send in to us and tell us what guns you'd like us to review in the future. And we're going to talk about everything we can because Bob is a history. Rich, I make it all up. No, Bob was there. You see, that's the thing. I didn't want to say he's a historian because he's not. He was there. Bob's 142 years old today. Exactly. Thank, birthday, thank you, Rich. Thank you. Where's my cake? Thank, we'll go get it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.